Bahais, welcome back. And just like the best league in the world, it has brought back all the problems that we thought we left in the previous seasons. The biggest problem that we've seen, gentlemen, is the man in the middle with the whistle. Abongile Tom, first match of the season, but to complain. Lufuno. Tomo the game is a whole You know, you can you can go back as uh, uh, net back semi-final Paris Chiefs, you can go back to semi-final MTN Sundowns Chiefs, you can go back to the final of uh, MTN last season, Pirates mm. Sundowns, mm. Mm. and again uh, this weekend again, you know, he's he keeps making crucial mistakes that really cost uh, teams in terms of uh, how they should progress or not. And the team really works hard, you know, and you, you need him to come in there. You know, we're not saying Reveries mustn't make mistakes, but he's very consistent. Lufuna is mentioning, is mentioning his consistency and, and you, you notice a pattern and, you know, especially when it comes to these cup games. We've seen action being taken with other referees before, mm -hmm. but he was let slide. I think uh, the word Lufuna uses is consistency. One, the league and SAFA need to be consistent in how they deal with it. Because then it should be standard that if you've made so many mistakes that are glaring, that mm. is standard. Mm. It shouldn't be because you made a mistake and Chiefs was playing against uh, Pirates or, or Sundowns, then action gets taken. Because are you saying in the other games, it's lesser game? But and what becomes a problem is that if we don't have that as a standard, is the chart that it gets used and say, this is what you did, this is what you did, because you look at those decisions, those decisions changes the game. Mm. You've got an offside goal that stands. Mm. And it's not just Tom alone, because he's got a, a assistant that is there with him. Mm. The, the first Pirates goal, yeah. and that comes from an offside position, he still ends up in an offside position, he scores. That changes the complexion of the game. Mm. Yeah. Super sport, there's a penalty appeal on the other side. As they say, hands not in neutral position nothing gets done. So while Gavin Hunt, you may say, yes, he was shouting at the ref and every other, but you look at that, this is, we're talking about the merry-go-around of coaches. Mm -hmm. Guess what teams are gonna be doing? Mm -hmm. You start losing those, mm -hmm. you don't deliver on deliverables. Thank you very much, coach, there's the door. Mm, Abongil is back again. He's doing the final this time. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of consistency, <laughs> yeah, one thing that's guaranteed is Stellan Bosch playing at Danny Craven. Yes. And we saw, them taking on TS Galaxy, mm -hmm. the football pitch is something that we, we were not anticipating. We see Adramovic complained about it. Was this complaint warranted? Look, Ed, you, you've got to take into consideration the following things. Because you, if you remember during the World Cup, they were very specific mm. about what type of grass that they wanted. But most of the pitches in South Africa have got a very different grass and we are in our winter season. The Paris coach speaks about winter was not kind to the grass. Mm. And when you then look at the weather leading up to that game, in Cape Town, it was a rainy Cape Town. There were storms and everything. So which meant the conditions underfoot. So when you start, and if you look at the, if you go back and you look at that game, the grass looks fine because there's no complaints about mm. the grass. Mm. Yes, there are brown patches, mm. it's not exactly summer. Mm. But once you then start running because it's soft, the studs are there, they're getting stuck, it deteriorates as the game goes on. So you've got to be able to say, is it a, it's, it's a condition thing that Stellenbosch could do nothing about because of it's winter and it's rainy, so the condition was always going, even if they had played at Cape Town Stadium, the conditions were always going to be uh, soft underfoot. But, but isn't Paul being fair? Because, I mean, we, we, we are following a standard that is set by Kev when yeah. it comes to the coaches. Absolutely. And Kev were very clear in terms of saying this pitch does not meet the required standards for us to play no, the Cox. Champions League match. Uh, uh, before you go to Lufun, let, let's Absolutely. address the Norway yeah. Lufun. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just on the pitch, because yeah. the Kev conditions are also the, the change room, the stands and every other thing. So the pitch may not have been the issue with Kev, because that's why PSL would approve. You've got to be able to have change rooms, you've got to have entry points. Mm. So there's, the Kev list is very long and very clear in what it is. It's not just on the should, pitch. Should the Kev be, be our blueprint in terms of following the standard that we require of the league? Most definitely, uh, Cox, because uh, look, the stadium is not approved to play CAF games, meaning that uh, Stellenbosch has to register another stadium to play their CAF games mm -hmm. uh, this season. Mm -hmm. But however, with, to counterattack what Mpo was say, saying, to say that Cape Town, we know they were in Cape Town. And it's not for the first time MTN has played their games 
in that Danny Craven Stadium. Mm. But that pitch was, was horrible for me to play the game of football. Mm. And, and uh, my view is that, uh, you know, the, the league needs to uh, look at that prior to the game being played to say, is this pitch suitable to host a game of that magnitude? Mm. They, they have Athlon Stadium. That the stadiums always have top-notch uh, uh, pitch. And they also have uh, Cape Town Stadium. They have options. They should have looked at that. Because honestly, if you look at the patches, and it, it doesn't even make a, a good uh, TV uh, you know, uh, uh, viewing. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very good, big game. I like the fact that you're mentioning options because it seems like Coach Steve Barker has options when it comes to his players. And there's a particular right back, Van Roy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that was not chosen on the day. He wasn't yeah. part of the option, but he came on as a sub later on. Yeah. Can we have red flags going off saying Look, he's, he's about to make the transition? From, from, from a coaching perspective, you would understand that it creates stability and doubt in the player's mind because there's conversations that are happening at management level. So the player's mindset may not be the best. But what it says, and it speaks a lot too, is been a, and we can rightly say there's conversations that are happening between mm. the two teams. Mm. But what one has to then look at and say, did Stelis look out of place? Did Stelis look like they were missing Van Rooyen? No. They are a team that is built on systems that are about the team more than they are about individuals. You would remember last season, in the middle of the season, Tetua left. Did they battle? No. You've got to remember that uh, that's the way Dupree left. Did they battle? No. So Stellenbosch and coach Steve Barker and his team of analysts and everybody, the way that they've done their business, the way that they keep bringing DDC players up, you've got to say kudos to them because where you can leave, but the system will still be able to carry on without you. Speaking of the system, I was expecting TS Galaxy to struggle, bearing in mind that they only have a limited number of players. Mm. They didn't reinforce their squad. Mm. Surprisingly, the first 10, 15 minutes, they seem to be a bit stable for. Yeah, they, they, actually, they actually played well. Um, but you could see that, uh, you know, they shot something um, when you look at how they were playing. For me, I thought uh, they were just uh, more of speed than actually, you know, play to hurt Stellenbosch, get into the right spaces. You know, they, they played with speed uh, because, of course, they're young, they've got young players that have energy, that they, they can be able to do that. However, uh, if you look at the balance of play, you will see that uh, Stellenbosch was more mature. They know how to get into the space, into the dangerous areas. And I thought uh, in terms of uh, dealing with set pieces, they were also vulnerable. Stellenbosch got into right spaces. Now it's time for you, the viewer, to go get your space. Take a break. Rutlojika, Oskatama.